Okay, so uh, Nabil, thank you for taking the time to uh, talk with me today mm -hmm. and to talk to students at the University of Waterloo uh, about innovation and, and the work that you do to help organisations uh, do it. Uh, can I ask you first uh, to give me uh, your description mm -hmm. of what your, the organisation you work for, uh, the Conrad Group, does? Yeah, um, so Conrad Group is basically a digital innovation consultancy. So what we do is we help our clients, in essence, find areas of opportunity in the digital space and then find ways to execute to kind of take advantage of the opportunity. So that could be in the ways of you know, a bank launching a new app or it could be a you know, site, re, uh, site relaunch in which they want to connect with their end consumers better. It could also just be taking an application that company has for their own employees and trying to improve its user experience and improve its overall design so that the employees can work a bit faster. Obviously, all within the realm of digital, but that's our overall gain, uh, aim is to find areas of opportunity and then execute on them by making it better for customers. So you're doing the practical things that organizations are trying to do with uh, digital innovation or digital transformation. So, right. uh, so you're working at a very uh, important and, and topical area of business right. at the moment. Uh, why is digital innovation so important to organizations today? Right. Um, I think, I mean, there's, there's definitely many reasons. The biggest one being that it's, it's where the world's headed overall. We're, we're seeing that trends, you know, people are using their mobile devices more and more. People are looking at the internet as the primary area to get their knowledge and to interact and to do business, whether it's sites like Amazon that people now consider to be the first place to go shop, or if it's a site like Google, which is their first place to go to find any information, or, you know, sites like Facebook or Twitter where people go to get their information. So it's, it's becoming more and more a digital world. And so I think companies and businesses overall are realizing that as people in general are going to a digital space, their employees will also be using digital um, means and so will their consumers. So in order to stay relevant, um, they need to ensure that they do have a strategy and plan to take advantage of the digital opportunities because if, frankly, if they don't, someone else will come in and disrupt. We hear the word, the word disrupt being very um, much used these days, but it's very much true that if you don't provide a digital way for people to interact with your business, someone else will. Um, and you may become obsolete. Okay, and so organizations are under pressure to change. What, uh, or why do organizations come to the Conrad Group to help them okay. with that? So I think what makes us unique overall is we offer kind of a full spectrum of services. There's definitely other firms out there that allow people to think about the digital strategy. Um, so they'll sit with you and they think about, okay, what is it that you need? Um, whether it's a new app, like I mentioned, a new app for banking or a new app for insurance. Um, or a new portal for employees, or it may be. Um, and then they'll basically just formulate that strategy with you, then you go find someone else to execute. What kind of group has overall is you know, end-to-end -end, um, capabilities. So we can actually do that for initial strategic aspect, which I'm often involved in. Um, then we can actually help prototype and design a solution. Um, before implementation, then we can test that prototype, see what it would be like, um, after which we actually can do the development of that and the QA of it. So it's basically an end-to-end -end spectrum and Conrad Group offers that capability and I think we also are just great at taking problems and solving them. Wonderful. And uh, you were a student, you studied at the University of Waterloo. Can you tell me what your role is with the Conrad Group today and, uh, uh, and what you do in your job today? Yes. I mean, First off, I'm a proud alumni of the University of Waterloo, so I'm very happy to, to be a part of this. Um, so I'm a digital uh, consultant, but basically my role is a consultant strategy and technology. So what I do is I'm kind of a frontline um, person within the organization that people interact with from a client perspective. So when a client engages Conrad Group or we're looking to engage a client, I'll be the first one to sit with their stakeholders, whether that's the internal departments or their senior leadership, and I'll be a part of formulating that strategy. Um, so once we have that strategy in place, we've formulated you know, a, a roadmap of how we're going to do things and come up with requirements and done our method of design thinking uh, to actually figure out our approach. I'll be involved in, in that first off, then I actually transition more into a PM role, so a project manager or a product manager uh, for the time being, whether it's you know, a new product that we're helping a company launch or an existing one or existing program that we're helping revamp, I'll transition a bit more of that role and I'll basically help them 
see that towards completion through the design phase and the development phase. I don't do any programming myself, but I do kind of help oversee a lot of those things and am involved in some of those technical discussions with the aid of people within the company that are a bit more suited. A, a very interesting yeah. job. <laughs> How did your education and experience lead you to this job? Yeah, so interestingly, I mean, I, I studied mechanical engineering at the University of Waterloo, and I had an option in, in management, so a little bit different from what a what this career is like, which is very digital focused, but I just always realized I love solving problems and I loved interfacing with people. Um, so, you know, I loved whether it was a thermodynamic equation or whether it was understanding how an engine works. End of the day, I just loved figuring out and getting to the root cause of things. Um, and it just so happened that I also liked being at the most um, innovating, you know, innovative areas of, of society. So for me right now, that definitely happens to be the digital space. Um, so I think that was something that was key and I think the utilization of the six different co-op terms that Waterloo allows you to have was foundational. Um, I changed careers twice and I'm 26 years old so I started out working in a, in a role similar to this actually in my first co-op so it was a very junior role within a consulting firm where I was really just taking meeting minutes and things of that sort um, and just helping you know make some reports in Excel but um, I realized then that I do like kind of client facing roles I then did a bunch of uh, more traditional mechanical jobs that involved some, you know, tools that I had to write my own short programs or I had to deal with some system level problems or just finding continuous improvement opportunities. So I think all of those things kind of factored into play and I think as a progressor in my co-ops, I always challenged myself to not only find what I liked, but also find what I didn't like. So that way I was continuously, you know, putting pressure on myself to assess is this the way I want to go or is this not? And I think by a bit of that and that evolution really allowed me to find that consulting is what I'm interested in and the education I gained and the experience I gained always fed into that as it's all a technical role in the end. So, yeah. Uh, very interesting. So co-op allowed you to yeah. try out different things and, and work out what you were good at and what exactly. you wanted to do. Yeah, definitely. Wonderful. Uh, so can you explain how Conrad works with organizations to uh, improve their innovation with digital technology. Yeah, so, so without giving away any of the secret sauce, and you know, um, basically we will engage clients and, and we run them through what's basically user-centric design. So what we ensure is that you are an organization, we understand that end of the day you have goals as a business, which may be driven by financial um, you know, perspectives, and you also have technology constraints or limitations or considerations that have to be taken into play. but. At the end of the day, you're servicing some sort of customer, and that customer is a human, right? Whether it's an internal employee that you're making something for, or it's an end consumer that you're making something for. So our goal is to really utilize that, and we start off by engaging the, the, uh, the business within what we call design thinking sessions. So these are multi-day sessions that are you know, led by someone such as, such as me, in which we get the stakeholders into a room, we align on what the business is looking for, we align to understand who the business is looking to serve, and that really is our biggest foundation as to how we do it. Um, after that, we really will work with the client to formulate a project plan. Um, we'll utilize some of the tools out in the marketplace, such as Confluence or Jira, to capture requirements and then execute on that overall project plan. So we use an agile structure, so the agile methodology is what we use to um, you know, do our development through. And really, it's just making sure that we keep finding uh, more and more ways to innovate and then helping them solve that. So. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, can you ex uh, describe any examples of how your work has helped your clients and uh, the benefits they've got from it? Yeah, so I mean, there's definitely a number of companies out there that we've worked with, um, Sonnet being one key example. Um, we've had key accounts at some companies that I can't necessarily speak to about, but sure. you know, for instance, there was, there was a client of ours that was um, the merging of two different companies. So they were looking to launch a brand new digital brand. So we helped with piecing that site together and we ensured that the overall online branding was on point, which was very key for this business because they were end of the day a digital business. Um, we've helped in the example of Sonnet, you know, this was a company that's um, looking to service clients only through a digital arm. So it was essential for them to get their overall digital experience 100% right. So we helped them um, in the development of that site and some of the strategic aspects of that site. So that was, those are some key examples of how we helped some of our clients you know, execute on these projects. And at the end of the day, they've been quite successful and they've been great for us. Wonderful. Uh, so in your work with your clients, what do you think are the most valuable things 
uh, that they could do to improve their innovation activity? I think for a lot of businesses, it really is freeing themselves from some of the constraints that may have in place. Um, a lot of companies will say that, you know, we have these business constraints or we have these technology constraints and so we cannot proceed. But I think kind of getting back to our earlier point of user-centric design if, is, is if they look back and say, who are we actually servicing at the end of the day um, and what do they need? So we come back to the fact that society is becoming increasingly dependent on digital means for communication, for whatever you call it. Um, all areas of life. So understanding that will really be something that helps um, companies stay on point and on focus to try and innovate further. Very good. Uh, so a lot of your work is helping, as you've mentioned, uh, organizations manage change. Uh, how do you think they could do that more effectively? What have you observed that, right. that would help them? I think that alignment piece is key. So a lot of businesses that I work with to find are quite large over the years. They've grown to be multiple departments that are very siloed. And I think they, they do a lot things in a lot more what we call waterfalls. That means you wait until one thing is done, until step A is done, until you can push step B, until you can push step C. And really facilitating communication between departments, between groups, between business lines, um, and ensuring that you're not holding up areas due to extensive, um, you know, wait times within one phase before you go to the next phase. So I think a lot of companies with more agile is definitely key and we work with a lot of clients to help them become more agile in the execution of, of projects and by that they it becomes much easier for them to innovate. But I really think that cross um, with inter kind of company communication is definitely key for them um, and breaking down some of the silos. Absolutely. Uh, I've just got one final question, yeah. uh, and that is, uh, do you have any advice uh, for students that are thinking about a career in consulting? Um, I think, yeah, I, I wish someone had told me early on that, you know, it really isn't what you study, um, more so it is the experience you build over time. Um, a lot of the consultants I work with come from all sorts of backgrounds, and, and I think a consultant, a good consultant, just has a lot of tools in their bag. So you have lots of things you can reach into. Um, and just different ways of, of engaging with clients because every client is different. So you need to be able to throw yourself into different situations and be able to come out on top. So I really think not worrying so much about the, the education you have, but really trying to go out there and experience different things. Um, if you're interested in becoming a consultant, you know, making sure that your people skills are something you really spend a lot of time working on because at the end of the day, you, you will meet people of all sorts in the industry um, and each one of them is a client, so you have to ensure that they're happy when they walk away. So making sure things like public speaking skills are something you, you spend a lot of time on, making sure your organizational skills are very much important, and really just trying to understand as much of business overall as possible and how businesses run, because regardless of what type of consultant you are, end of the day, you are helping a business. So you may come in to solve a small piece of it, whether that be technical, whether that be strategic, whether that be you know, creative, but you really need to understand the business well to understand what they need well, so that's where I come into diversity being a key aspect for a consultant. So diversity, organization, public speaking, and obviously having a strong technical foundation, which maybe isn't too in-depth, but does allow you to pick up new things very quickly. So I don't know if that's a lot first. It seems overwhelming, but it definitely is key for, for people to have if they're looking to get the consulting. Well, yeah. Thank you. Uh, thank pleasure. you for taking the time to talk to me, Nabil. Um, I think this will be valuable, uh, especially for people who are looking at their own organization and thinking about what they need to do to change, uh, and also for students that are thinking about a career in the consulting world. So thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. It's my pleasure. Thank you.